عسلام الناس الكل مرحبا بكم في اون نوفيل فيديو اليوم باش نتقابلوا مع روندي ليويس جيلتون سونت بو شاسور دو سيركوي بور سون 83 e سيركوي مونديال il a été accueilli par master racing team pour assister à la première manche de la saison 2019 tunisia challenge في سيركوي تاع البلفيدير او اون شيكان What I'm doing is something called track chasing. It is the idea of traveling the world and also within the United States and trying to see as many race tracks as I possibly can. But a lot of people when they hear that they think that my hobby is about racing only and that couldn't be further from the truth. It's really about three things. One of which is racing. Secondly, it's about meeting people and seeing the local sites of the locations that I visit. And um, it's especially fun and interesting and intriguing uh, to go to foreign countries because oftentimes foreign countries, the culture is much different than the United States. The people are different. The seats, uh, the signs that I will see are different. And so it makes it a lot of fun. And as you mentioned, Tunisia is the 83rd different country on all continents where I've seen racing. And uh, then the third part of it, beyond racing and uh, touring foreign locations, is the idea of the logistical planning. It takes uh, quite a bit of preparation to figure out how to make a trip uh, from the United States to some faraway location. Normally I have to uh, develop a relationship, usually online, with some people who live locally, and they can tell me uh, the details of the trip will be. When will the race be? Where will the race be? And I just don't come to a foreign country to see one race for a few hours. I come for usually about a week or so, which is what I did in Tunisia. I was there for six or seven days, met all kinds of people. I was able to eat in the homes of uh, people who live locally and, uh, and do sightseeing all day with local people. And that was really the highlight of the trip. Ten years from now, when I look back on these trips, I will have forgotten about what the racing was like but I wouldn't have forgotten about the people I met and the things that we did. So track chasing, to sum up, is racing, uh, meeting new people and seeing new things, and planning these trips uh, so that I don't spend every money, every bit of the money that I have. The first person that I got in contact with was a, was a Tunisian driver named Slim Ab. That's the name he goes by on Facebook. And he was very helpful in giving me information uh, about uh, how the racing was going to be. And then I got in touch with a young woman named Labna. And uh, Labna got me in touch with a fellow by the name of Daphner. And I was able to speak to Daphner in English, and he confirmed that they were going to be racing. So it was just a few contacts in advance that got me in touch with uh, uh, enough of a, a situation where I, I knew I could make the trip. Once I got to the track, it was interesting to see there was going to be a street race. Uh, I don't really see very many street races. Normally it's a permanent circuit track, or in America it would be a permanent oval track. So a street race was a little bit different, and Daphner did tell me that it couldn't, the race couldn't be confirmed until like a few days beforehand because maybe the city would change their mind. That was a little concerning because I had to buy my airline ticket and make my trip arrangements and had he come back and said, gee, for whatever reason they didn't do the race, that would have been a problem. Uh, but fortunately that wasn't a problem. And the cool thing about uh, the race in Tunisia was that I knew some of the drivers uh, Anis, uh, driver of the black number 50, was very helpful, and uh, Amin uh, is the vice president of the Master Racing Club, and he was extremely helpful. And so the day of the race, they took me to the garage to see the preparation. I actually got a ride in the race cars a little bit, and uh, these guys are crazy drivers. And uh, 
So it was fun seeing the behind the scenes things. A lot of times the race fan only sees the racing at the track and they never get a chance to see what how the cars are prepared, the work that goes into making something like that happen and, and how the garages look and all that stuff. So being able to get behind the scenes was good as well. Then once at the track, um, I was able to move around and get some video and some photos from different angles. Um, and uh, also meet a lot of people, talk to a lot of people. And the racing was really similar to a lot of other places. I mean, you might think that Tunisia, which is a much, much different country than America, the racing situation would be a lot different. It really isn't. Uh, the drivers prepare their cars the best they can, operating under the constraints of budgets. They just can't spend all the money in the world. And it's, it's very competitive. Uh, I think there were about eight cars. Uh, the racing in Tunisia actually reminded me a lot of the racing in Mexico, where they a lot of times they'll just take a, a series of streets in the city, block them off for the day, and have their race there. And the cars are very similar to what they might race in Mexico as well. So uh, the highlight was meeting the drivers and the fans and some of the officials. Uh, it was really nice of them to recognize me at the end of the race and, and give me a reward for attending the event. And uh, making uh, Tunisia my 83rd track chase in country, uh, very, I'm very proud of that. I've seen racing at more than 2,500 tracks, and now I've seen racing in 83 countries. And the level of professionalism is as varied as you could possibly imagine. I guess the most professional races would be something like the Indianapolis 500 or Monaco or F1 races that I've seen racing uh, for F1 in uh, South Korea, Singapore, India. That's very professional. On the other hand, in the United States, we have some of the most uh, entry-level racing programs that you could possibly imagine, much more entry-level than I was seeing in Tunisia. So T Tunisia is somewhere uh, between entry-level and the most professional, and uh, the race officials are very serious about what they do. Uh, they try to make uh, it safe for the drivers, safe for the fans. Um, so uh, I would like to see more cars. I think there were only eight cars, and so uh, it would be better, the racing would be more entertaining if there were 25 cars. Um, but uh, of all of the countries where I've seen racing, I would say that Tunisia racing was uh, interesting and uh, diverse. And uh, it was just fun to actually see a race here uh, because Tunisia is very much off the beaten path for American tourists. Uh, there are not a lot of Americans who tour Tunisia. It's in Africa. Not a lot of Americans go to Africa of any country whatsoever. So uh, at least what I was doing when I came to Tunisia was pretty unusual for Americans. I do rank the countries and I have a category called best. Uh, best is the top category. Uh, you cannot get better than best. Uh, but it doesn't mean that only one country or one group can be in that category. There are several in that category. And I did a little survey last night and I determined that there are about 20 or 22 of my 83 countries that rank in the best category. And I put Tunisia in that category as well. So there they rank in the best group. But it isn't really just for the racing. Uh, it's really for the people I met, the quality of the people I met, who uh, invited me into their homes to meet their family, their wives, their daughters. Uh, they gave me meals inside their homes. They took the time out of their busy day to, to take me around and tour some of the highlights of, of the country. Uh, so Tunisia gets a best ranking for the people and the racing is good and uh, the logistics of getting there uh, were doable. It was, it was a 12 hour flight from Los Angeles to Rome and then another two hour flight roughly from Rome to Tunis. So it was a long trip, but I was there for five days. So they get a best category ranking for the people more so than anything else. A highlight of my trip was to be able to go out to the new racetrack and see that development. I think it's called Tunisia First Club. I actually spent two hours with the owner of the project. 
and learned all about how he's building it and I was with their construction manager and so the construction manager spoke both Arabic and English and so for two hours he translated our conversation back and forth and uh, he told me that I could call the owner Lutzi. I hope I, I have that right. Uh, so that was a highlight and uh, the hotel stay was perfect. I, I had a beautiful room at the, at the Sheraton Hotel. Uh, Slim organized the guys to come out and pick me up at the airport. That's very special. And then they gave me a phone, one of their phones, so I could stay in contact with them. And uh, then Amin and I went out and uh, drank beers together and uh, did a bunch of things. He was actually wearing a Chicago Cubs hat, which is pretty cool. You don't see that very often. So. Uh, I didn't know what to expect because I had a little bit of a difficult time initially when I was back home getting enough communication in English to convince me I could make the trip. Because we did, I couldn't really figure out for sure when the race was going to be, what kind of race it was going to be. And so I will say this, the trip exceeded my expectations because once I got on the ground, everybody was there to make sure that uh, I was going to have a good time. So. Uh, the trip exceeded my expectations. After the trip was finished, I put Tunisia in the best category, and uh, I don't know how it could be any better than that. So, yeah. thank you. Okay.